is hope. And so Isaiah gives revelation of the dawning of a new day. And that's what uh, many people need today, just to catch the revelation of the dawning of a new day. Is there anybody here who uh, has recently looked at things in a bleak way, and maybe you felt yourself kind of hopeless, and maybe it looked dark, and it just looked like, my God, the further I go, the worse it gets. I stopped to tell you this morning and that God is sending a word to you to arise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, arise. That's the first word, that's the first word out of Isaiah's mouth in the 60th chapter. Uh, and verse number one, he says, arise. Now, arise uh, uh, is a good word. You understand that to fulfill your destiny, one has to arise. From wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, whatever you're facing, if you're going forward, to reach your destiny, you have to arise. You remember God sent uh, an angel to tell Joseph to arise. Last week uh, in the message, I ended, and I, I, I don't know why I'm thinking that you will remember what I ended on last week. But just in case, we ended with uh, the angel after the wise men had worshipped Jesus and, and uh, Herod had told the wise men to come back after you worship him and tell me where he is so that I can go and worship. And you look at Matthew chapter number uh, 2 and verse 13, the angel uh, told Joseph to arise and take the child and the mother to Egypt. And then I noticed that uh, at the appointed time in Matthew 2 and 20, that same word is used, arise, uh, Herod is dead, take Mary and the baby back to his place. And so whenever you think of the word arise, it, it means to get up. It means to stand up. Look at your neighbor and, and look at him square in the face and say, neighbor, arise. It's time for you to stand up. It's time for you to get up. Uh, it, uh, it, it means uh, uh, to originate or to become a parent. It's time for you to become a parent. It's time for you and everything God has said about you to become a parent. It's time for your purpose to become a parent. It's time for it to come forth. Look at somebody now. You help me prophesy and, and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's time for you to become a parent. That suggests then that maybe I've been in a place that, uh, that it has not been fulfilling my purpose. Maybe I've been at a level. Maybe I've been in a circumstance, a situation. Maybe there's something that has overshadowed me. Maybe, maybe there, I've been in hopelessness and despair. And, and the word is saying this morning, it's time to get up. It's time to arise and to become a parent and, and, and to show forth who God says you are. Is there anybody ready to arise? Arise. Is there anybody who feels like you need to arise? You need to arise and get to your purpose. You need to arise. There's more potential in you than you are releasing. And the word of God to you today is to arise and become a parent. Then we talk about uh, you got to look up if you felt defeated lately, if you felt beaten down lately. If you felt rejected lately, and even during this time that we celebrate the birth of Christ, many people become very lonely or they feel more lonely in this time than any other time of the year. And so I've come this morning to tell somebody to shake it off. It's time for you to arise out of the dust. It's time for you to arise out of the loneliness. It's time to arise out of depression. Come on, somebody. It's time to rise out of sickness. It's time to rise out of despair. It doesn't matter how much you have or don't have. It's time for you to become a parent. Uh, God wants to show forth who you are, and there's more going for you than going against you. Somebody say arise. arise. 
And then Isaiah says, shine. He said, arise and shine. Now, if you shine, that means, my God, you become apparent. The revelation of who you are is seen. All right? He says, shine. Now, we know that light shines. He says, arise and shine, for thy light has come. Now, when you put the two together, arise and shine, it is really translated, arise and be enlightened. That's what Isaiah was telling the people, uh, to arise and be enlightened, for your light has come. Now, uh, understand that Isaiah knew, and we must know, that the people then and now have no light of our own. Because when there was choice between light and darkness, in the first Adam over in the Garden of Eden, we chose darkness. And darkness is our natural choice today. Oh, don't fool with you. Uh, come on, somebody. You better understand that, that if it's not for the grace and the spirit of God in you, you would choose darkness every time. Your natural inclination is to go with darkness. Come on, somebody. And Paul said, sometimes I wrestle with darkness and light. He says, because uh, it, it seems like that when I would do good, I'm trying to choose darkness. But the things that I ought to do, I don't seem to be doing. And the darkness that I ought to be running from, I'm sometimes drawn to. Who shall deliver me? See, I got some folks shaking their head right now. See, I know you're looking pretty in here, and I know you're looking sanctified in here. But, but let me tell you, the truth is that our natural desire is for the darkness. We were born in sin and shaping into iniquity, and thank God for the grace that makes me choose light. But whenever I realize that, and that I don't keep myself sharp in the spirit, I find myself choosing dark stuff. And that's why, don't, don't be surprised, don't be surprised. You, you're going to be drawn to darkness if you don't have the light. You got to be enlightened. Tell your neighbor, you got to be enlightened. Your light has come. Now, so we don't have any light of our own. The Israelites were to arouse themselves with the good news that a life and separation from God is not the final state. Somebody may have come in here this morning or somebody might be listening to me right now and you know that, and that you're in a place that's not right. You know that you are living a life that's not right. You may not understand all there is to know about God. You may not understand the details of knowing who Jesus Christ is. But you know the things that you are participating in and the things that you regularly do aren't right. And I'm telling you, the good news is, but you don't have to stay there. You don't have to keep doing it. I don't care what your family background was. I don't care how many brothers and sisters have done it. I don't care what your heritage is. I don't care what your community is. You don't have to stay in darkness because all you got to do is say, arise and be enlightened, come into the revelation, and I want to come forth and be a parent of who God created me to be. And so Isaiah, Isaiah, when he says the light has come, this prophecy had three dimensions. The first was about their immediate opportunity to rebuild. Can you encourage your neighbor beside you? I like to talk to neighbors if, if you don't. Maybe you're visiting. And you say, why is he continuing to tell me to look at my neighbor? Some folk don't like to bother with the neighbor. But Jesus says that you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Huh? So now if you got a problem with your neighbor, maybe you can tell your neighbor that it's about their immediate opportunity to rebuild. Can I tell somebody in here today that despite what you've been through, despite what may have torn you down, Despite what may have torn you apart and tried to shred your very life, there's the power to rebuild even now. Come on, somebody. 
Come on, there's the power to rebuild right now. My God, there are people who have entered your life and tried to wreck your life. There have been people who tried to leave your life and wreck your life. There are things you did yourself that tried to wreck and tear down.